what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and i appreciate you being here today i bring you five things you missed from the forsaken reveal v duck but before we get into it guys if you guys would like to support the channel hitting that like button truly helps me out and i do appreciate that support also remember to subscribe if you are new around here and want to keep up with the latest destiny 2 news and information Okay, so the Forsaken reveal stream did indeed showcase some amazing changes coming to the game. Changes that will make the game great again in my opinion. We saw and heard of new supers, new collections, new enemies, new planets, a new raid, new exotics and much much more. But today I bring you 5 things I haven't really seen many people speak about or even recollect. Hopefully there is at least one thing within this video you haven't seen or heard about already. So let's go. So first up the new level and power level. Now later on in the stream we saw Deej chatting with Steve Cotton and Scott Taylor, game director and project lead, about the Forsaken DLC. Now when they were showcasing the new in-game triumphs they did say that numbers seen within this brief glimpse are basically placeholder numbers. It's important to mention this because I know someone will comment it down below. But within the VDUP we saw many glimpses of Guardian's inventories which showcased to us a new power level and new character level which in my opinion would make sense for such a major DLC. The new power level was 600 and the new character level was 50. If we also take a look at some of these weapons, their attack values are 600 and we see it requires you to be at level 45 to use the weapon. So this also makes sense. And I do believe these will be the new power levels and levels to chase come September 4th when the Forsaken DLC releases. If you think about it, the jump is big for say a mini DLC like the Curse of Osiris or the Warmind DLCs. But for a full expansion, a giant expansion, 215 extra power levels and 20 extra character levels, ain't that crazy to think about. Some would state it probably should be more, I mean it could be more. Until around release date, I doubt we will know for sure. Important to mention also it's been confirmed that power level will matter within Iron Banner and Trials come September 4th for the Forsaken DLC. Okay, so moving on guys, and another thing of major importance to many, many people is mass shader deletion. I mean, it's coming to a point now as to where my vault is becoming full. My pulse master is full already, and that's after my character is already full too. Mass shader deletion has been something we've all wanted from the get-go. Deleting shaders one by one we have stacks of hundreds I'm pretty sure is more of a grind than reaching a top level. I understand the process of point of view where as to shaders because when dismantled can offer dust, glimmer and so forth. Dismantling a whole bunch means the game has to calculate what and how much to give you. If this is what's holding them back then to be honest I wouldn't even care if I ain't rewarded for dismantling them. I just want them gone. I want my space back. Some shaders you get so easily, by the time you've dismantled 50, you've already obtained another 60 and they're waiting for you in your postmaster. Now within the reveal, it was spoke about for a brief period, joking about it was almost a title of the Hey, DLC. I can be spending my time going and getting this thing while I'm getting a patrol and I'm hunting down an outlaw and I'm or doing all of these things. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, or the quest to delete Bulk shaders, it's going to be great. <laughs> Cool guys. Yeah. It's almost the title. So well. <laughs> besides the 200 extra spaces within our vaults, the collections and so forth, shared and mass deletion is coming. And to be honest guys, it's been a year. Well, it will be a year. It's a bad damn time if you ask me. It was confirmed on the roadmap. You can see it listed on the September 4th update for the Forsaken. Bulk shared deletion. I cannot wait. Okay, so moving on, and if you ask any veteran to the game, hey, what do you think about their power weapon system in Destiny 2? Do you think Bungie overstretched it? Do you think the changes made were not to a standard portrayed as the right call by the community? Would you revert back to the old system if you could? I guarantee you any veteran within their answer would state yes. They have missed how heavy used to play out in Destiny 1, and the weapon system in Destiny 2 wasn't the right call. I also guarantee 95% of the people answering this question will state they miss machine guns. Now machine guns were a major part of many many people's loadouts within Destiny 1, within PvE and PvP. I can't tell you how much I miss the corrective measure, the zombie apocalypse, the Jordis hammer and many many more. Would I welcome them back in D2? Heck yes, I'm pretty sure most of us would too. Now within the reveal of Edoc, Josh Hamrick and Lars Becken both referred to machine guns. Take a listen. You're like, why would you ever choose a bow in a game that has an automatic you know, machine gun, but boy, it's deadly. I mean, that's a nice machine gun you got there, buddy, but right, and, it's, and then it's done. Does this mean they are coming back? Well, actually, I don't believe it does. 
According to Josh on Twitter not long after the video went live, he tweeted at this. For your information, when Lars and I both referred to machine guns in today's VDoc, we were talking about auto rifles. Just wanted to clear that up sooner than later. That being said, your thunderous excitement has been noted. Winky face. To be honest, during the review, I knew exactly what he meant. But it's this tweet that has perked my interest. Your thunderous excitement has been noted, winking face. Is that a clue? Could we eventually see the return of the Thunderlord, the exotic D1 machine gun? Well guys, after this tweet, I wouldn't be surprised. What do you think? Okay, so moving on. Now, as we know, the Reef is a big part of the story within the Forsaken DLC. The Reef in Destiny 1 was occupied by the Queen's Emissary. One person we all, while well, most took a liking to, was Petrovenge. So will we see her within the Forsaken DLC? It makes sense that we would, but absolutely no mention of the Queen or her army were mentioned as I can remember. But hey guys, there are two clues we do see which lead me to believe the Queen and her army will play roles in the DLC. The first glimpse is of a 3D render of Petrovenge on a PC screen seen in the background within the VDoc. It looks to be a scene which I don't recall seeing before, so it's definitely something new. So will she appear? I actually think so. The second instance is no doubt part of either a mission cinematic or a mission intro. We see a queen ship flying above a group of guardians dropping bombs on the enemy. So this kind of confirms the queen in my opinion will play some kind of role within this DLC even if it hasn't been mentioned yet. So we will see people we will see. Okay so lastly supers. Now it's been confirmed there will be 9 additional supers added to the Forsaken DLC, one per subclass. Now in the VDoc we saw glimpses of most, but the ones we didn't see or didn't think we saw were the Sentinel Titan Super Edition and the Warlock's Dawnblade Edition. I still don't think we have seen the Sentinels yet, but the Dawnblade Edition I believe we might actually have. A snippet within the VDoc shows a Titan Sentinel popping his bubble. Within this we see a Dawnblade Warlock do something I don't think we've seen before. If we look closely we see this jumping slam where he slams his sword into the ground and create what looks to be a kind of shield in front of him. When it sculpts out we see a kind of figure of four shape around him. Now I will admit I don't have a Warlock in game but many people have and the guys I've spoke to don't recall this being a part of the subclass. Yes they have something called Phoenix Dive and yes it has an area of effect once you hit the ground but I don't recall it creating a shield or a figure of four like we see here. That glowing red is prominent. If you take a closer look too, in slow motion, the shield kind of pops into place after he slams the floor, sort of like a animation timer. And this one has many, many people thinking, is this the new Warlock Dawnblade Super? I don't actually know, but what do you guys think? Let me know down below people. And on that note guys, we have come to the end of the video. These were 5 things you may miss from the Forsaken DLC VDoc reveal. If you guys enjoyed the video, leaving a like truly helps me and my channel out. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.